Hello, everyone. I will start in three minutes or five, four minutes. Yeah, I will. I will start in four minutes. I cannot see myself, or uh, it's no problem. Three minutes. Yep. That's a six. We will start in one minute. Yes, now 2 p.m. in Turkish time, so we can start our uh, webinar about 3D alteration. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the Woodpecker uh, family about this webinar, inviting me. Uh, they always thinking about me and invited me as a lecturer for Woodpecker, and I want to, uh, I really appreciate to test their products, uh, first of all, uh, before the market. And I love woodpecker uh, companies' devices and also, uh, you know, the materials uh, I really use in my daily practice. That's why uh, it's a pleasure to speak about the woodpecker and the 3D operation. Uh, the, the, the webinars are very important for us uh, in these days because we, we are limited to face-to-face -face events. So uh, we are updating our knowledge and we are sharing our knowledge with you uh, through the webinars. We are limited to hands-on courses or workshops. So uh, the webinars are very good for this uh, kind of uh, situation. I hope uh, the code will pass and we will go uh, Foreign, link, foreign uh, countries and we will give lectures and workshops again. We hope so. So 
uh, first of all, some of them know me, but the others not. So I want to introduce myself. I'm Taha Özürek and I'm working uh, in the Istanbul Medinet University in Istanbul in Turkey as a full-time associate professor and a head of the Department of the Endodontics. Uh, in Istanbul, you know, where is a very good city. I have many papers, many research about uh, especially about the Nikelstein files, operation, irrigation, and also retreatment. Uh, you can find my you can find my papers through uh, Google Scholar or PubMed as you as you wish. I want to show our campus. You know, the Istanbul has two parts: the European part and the Asian part. I'm in the Asian part near the Sabia Gökçen International Airport. Here is our campus. It's a big campus, and here is our facility our hospital and our you know the uh, pre clinics and clinics and also the rooms for education and i want to show a brief video about istanbul it's a lovely city the bosphorus is very fantastic the ancient walls the mosques. I really want to visit our country, especially in especially Istanbul or Cappadocia. What you want, but you have to see the Bosphorus first. It's a really lovely city. We have three bridges that connect the Asian and European part of the world. It's an overcrowded city. Uh, approximately 18 million people live in this city. It's a little bit complicated. But as a tourist, it's good. <laughs> Median Towers. I hope after the COVID pandemic, you can visit our Istanbul city. And of course, you will come to our faculty and uh, I, can, I can Of course, through this webinar, I will share my clinical experience with you, but I will, uh, I will based on our main uh, endodontic books and main endodontic journals, uh, about endodontics, of course. First of all, I want to I want I want to talk about the less is more that's said by German people uh, in 1876 by Ludwig. As you know, this is the first computer of the world. It fills all the room. It's a very huge device. But nowadays we are using such kind of, of you know cell phones that can perform much complicated. Uh, calculations than the first computer but i mean everything is going smaller for example we used to use such kind of endodontic motors with cord with lots of thing heavy things but nowadays we are using such kind of cordless endodontic motors for example this is a motor i'm just using i'm uh, currently using this motor with cordless and it's integrated and uh, electronic apex locator and it's a very small hat to uh, manipulate the motor inside the mouth that's very uh, precise uh, work as i said everything is going minimal so what about the dentistry we can talk about the minimal invasive dentistry. It's said by Ericsson in 2004. Minimal invasive dentistry is the application of systemic respect for the original tissue. I love this uh, definition and I always uh, talk about it in my, uh, you know, undergraduate lessons and postgraduate lessons or in my workshop or in my webinars. Because if we respect the tissue, the tissue will respect to us too. That's why it's very important. If we don't respect the tooth, the tooth will not respect us. And, uh, you know, the, we, we will go for complicated root canal treatments and, uh, uh, you know, it can be flare-ups or uh, it can be un unsuccessful root canal treatments because of our unrespect to the original tissue. What about the invasive, minimal invasive endodontics? 
The concept of minimal invasive endodontics calls for the treatment and the prevention of the palpal pathosis and the apical periodontitis while causing the least amount of change to the dental heart tissue. What's the dental heart tissue? The dental heart tissue, of course, we have just animal, dentin, and cement. So we have to respect this tissue. We have to prevent this tissue as much as possible. And we cannot, we, 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 we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't waste these tissues unnecessarily. That's why that's very important, the concept minimal invasive endodontics. For example, in this case, it's, it's an upper central incisor. Uh, the, the, the patient visit our clinic with uh, chronic apical periodontitis with a sinus tract. Uh, tract. So, first of all, in, uh, uh, when we think about the, our preclinical days, we are thinking that we have to create a triangular endodontic access cavity in a single area. But nowadays, we are using it just a hole to reach the root canal. It should be located in the slightly palatal side of the incisal edge. So with this hole, or with this endodontic access cavity, contracted endodontic access cavity, we can directly, we can directly go to the root canal and we can clean, shape, and pack the root canals three-dimensionally. For example, in this case, I use, this is the initial radiographs, I use MTA to plug the apical third, and then I use thermoplastic uh, gutta percha to fill whole the root canal system. I will show how can I, how can I fill the whole canal with the thermoplastic, root, uh, thermoplastic gutta percha uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the end of my presentation. Also, in the molar axis, we, our axis has been modified to contract it, conventional to contract it. In the conventional endodontic axis, we uh, sacrifice much dentin and animal. But nowadays, we are using contracted endodontic axis cavities that allows to see all the root canals and we, we can achieve a good, a good root canal treatment. For example, as you are, if you are using a dental operation microscope like me, you can use as much as smaller uh, endodontic access cavities. But if you are using dental uh, dental loops or uh, other magnification and illumination systems, you can use a little bit larger endodontic access cavities, but never like endodontic access cavities like one. Okay, we are going smaller. For example, in this case, with with a Contract endodontic access cavity, you can shape, clean, and pack the root canals three dimensionally. But what we say, if you can see, you can trade. If you cannot see, you cannot trade. Th that's why, that's why in every webinar, in every lesson of mine, I always highlight magnification and illumination systems. You have to use dental operation microscope or at least a binocular dental loops, okay? That's very important for endodontics. Even in preclinical lessons, in undergraduate le uh, te teaching, sorry, in, even in preclinical lessons, I'm showing the students' mistakes with a dental operation microscope with high details, high, with high magnification and with all the details. So the students can understand their mistakes very easily. But of course, when I use dental operation microscope, I see lots of details, lots of mistakes. That's why I don't know if the students are happy to or not. I don't, I don't know. You should ask them too. But it's very efficient to use dental operation microscope in the preclinical education. So let's talk about, let's remember about the root canal anatomy and let's go for operation uh, presentation. Anatomy. As we all know, the root canal anatomy is not like a pipe, like that. If it is, it's, it will be very easy. We can clean the whole root canal system, we can uh, shape the whole canal, root canal system, and we can pack it three dimensionally very, very easily. But in clinical, uh, reality is very different from this part. These, these are reconstructed image of the lower molars, 
as you see, there are lots of oval canals, there are lots of anastomoses like that. There are lots of different anatomies that we face every day in our clinical practice, clinical endodontic practice. So the cleaning of these, this, such kind of dif uh, difficult anatomies is very, very difficult. But in conventional endodontic knowledge, we were focused, we used to focus on the shaping procedures, but nowadays we are focused on irrigation and activation systems much than the shaping procedures. Because as we know, as we all know, we cannot touch at least 50% of the root canal walls with our very big nitide files. So we have to clean all these areas with irrigation and activation systems. And after the cleaning, of course, we have to pack these areas three-dimensionally. As you can ima imagine, we cannot uh, operate root canals three-dimensional with a single cone. That's why we have to, before we start to operate root canals, we have to choose a sealer. The most popular sealers are resin-based sealers, and one of them is AH Plus from Dance Splice Serona. And the other one is Two Seal from VDW. They are very popular. Also, we can, uh, we can consider MTA as a root canal filling, but because of the bad, bad handling properties of MTA, mineral aggregate, nowadays we are using bioceramic based root canal sealing sealers or MTA based root canal, seal, uh, root canal sealers like that, uh, Biosera from Danta Company. These, these, uh, these, uh, these root canal sealers are premix ready to use and it's very uh, easy handling properties. So what? why we are using MTA, I mean the mineral trioxide aggregate for root canal treatment or root, root canal uh, operation? The first reason is, the first reason is the MTA is biocompatible. That means it has no adverse effect to our body. That's okay that's in our pocket but uh, according to me the most important features of MTA for endodontics is the bioactivity the bioactivity means if you put an MTA to a chronic apical periodontitis it will heal much faster than the resin based sealer that's very good evidence uh, in the literature that shows these properties. That's why in, in my daily practice, I always use in the divital tooth, mineral trioxide aggregate based root canal sealers like Biosera from Dentac. So let's remember and let's think about the, what we are doing while operating the root canal, which technique we, we will use to operate root canals. One of them is lateral compaction. We used to use lateral compaction and the other one is the vertical compaction. I also prefer vertical, vertical compaction than lateral compaction because I know that vertical compaction is more suitable to, more suitable for 3D operation. I will show you later. And also today we can say that MTA seal, seal for example, in the uh, you know uh, undeveloped root, root canal apex, we can use MTA as a sealer, as I showed in my first case. And also after the MTA-based root canal sealers, the hydraulic condensation, hydraulic obturation techniques also can we say an operation technique for root canal operation. So. In lateral compaction, in lateral compaction, we are shaping the root canals, we are cleaning the root canals, we feel the tack back, we check the gut aperture fit with the radiographs, and then we operate the root canals. In the shaping, in the shaping, I prefer to use T endomass systems, T endomass reciprocating single file system that I and Dr. Mustafa designed it in Turkey and we are manufacturing in Turkey these files. The file system has 
four files one of them is glycat file it's very important for root canal shaping especially in the narrow and curved canals and also there are three shaping files according to the uh, size of the shaped canals for example narrow medium or large root canals m25 m40 and or m50 we, you can finish all the root canal uh, shaping with a bone file as a reciprocating file. For example, in this case, in preoperative radiograph, you can see a very uh, big decay in the distal of the maxillary second molar. So I decided to go to root canal treatment. It's maxillary second molar. I was lucky to find MB2. You know, it's, it's about 60 or 70 percent uh, in the maxillary second molar. It's lower than the first molar. As you see, with TG file of the Tiendomasi system, I can directly go for MB2 to create a glide path after, of course, scouting and determining the working land. I can directly go to the working land with TG file easily. As all the reciprocating files does, we are using these files with a packing motion. Free packing motion, remove the file, clean the file fluids, and then irrigate root canals. And if you like, you can activate it and re-irrigate it, then reinsert the uh, file and repeat the procedures until you reach the working land. It's very easy, it's not complicated. One top, one RPM, one working land. It's very simple. That's why you, you will have much time for irrigation and activation. You, you will not spend much of your time for shaping. That's why I like reciprocating files and that's why we design uh, our files in reciprocating motion. This is the final result. And this is the final result. What, what should I uh, show you? Because here, this is the MB1. This is the MB1, MB2, and this is the buckle. And here is the uh, palatinal, palatinal canal. It's hide in the buckle uh, aspect of the root, uh, palatal aspect of the root. As you see, as you see, the uh, endodontic axis cavity is contracted. It's not very large or it's not very narrow, but like nigia access. As I said in my beginning of my presentation, we are we are not performing a very big endodontic axis cavity. We are saving dentin and animal, especially pericervical dentin. That's very important. If you shape the root canals very well, you will feel the tuck back. So what was the tuck back? Let's see in a video. When we fit the, our master cone to the working gland, when we remove the GP, we will feel a resistance, okay? That's called tuck back. That's very important for root canal operation. If you don't feel tuck back, we shouldn't feel, we shouldn't operate root canals because it will extend through the apex and it will cause uh, foreign body reactions or something like that. So how can we, in the transparent, uh, you know, acrylic resin, we can see where it binds the root canals, but in the real, in the real situation, how can we how can we uh, ensure that the, the the GP point will bind in the apical, not in the middle third? How can we ensure this situation? Because if we bind in the middle third, we can think that it it will fit in the apical third too. That's very easy. We can use with we can use a manual. K file, H file, or C pilot file, whatever you want, we can check the apical shaping with a manual file that fits our last night eye file. For example, if we finish our root canals to 30 or 4, we can use 30, we, we, uh, we can use 30 K file to check the apical shaping. For example, I will show a video for you. Now I'm using 2506, 2506 in the mandibular incisor. I'm, I'm using it. And then after irrigation and activation procedures, I'm using a 25K uh, H file here. Here, I'm placing to the working land. 
I push the file forward and it's gone. That's that's that, that means our foramen is larger than 25. So I'm I'm directly go for 40 and preparing to return it performing up to 40 or 4 and I'm using 40 monial file okay 40 monial file to the working client and again I'm pushing the file through the apex but it's not going anywhere that's the apical shaping is done that means the apical shaping is done that's very important and another important point for root canal operation is the gutta parka standardization. Because of the gutta percha manufacturing procedure, uh, the gutta perchers are not standard. Uh, it can change the size in the same box. That's why we can use such kind of gutta parka, gutta parka, gutta parka cutters uh, for gutta parka standardization. For example, thanks to Woodpecker, uh, the last device, the last gutta parcha cut, cutter, R1 Plus, you can easily cut uh, your GP points in, in, in size, what you desire. For example, if I want to achieve a 25 or 6 GP point, I'm getting, I can get a 15 or 6 GP like that. And I will show you. That's 15 or 6 GP. This is the R1 Plus. There are holes to 20 to 140. And there's a blade on the top of it, and there's a ruler for uh, measurement of our GPs and other ones. I'm get I got the 15 or 6 GP. I insert the GP. So 25 hole, hole, in 25 hole, you can see the GP will extend through the hole and with the blade I can easily cut the GP. Now I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I have a GP point that the apical, uh, apical size is 0.25 mm and the taper is 0.6. It's very good for our uh, clinical experiments. It's very easy to do it. But you can say that I, I can do it with the scissors and you will face with such kind of GP ending. And I can use a bistry, and you can face such kind of, you know, uh, GP ending in the apical third. But if you use a R pilot, a R1 plus, you will face such kind of round and very well operated uh, GP point. It will not deform your GP in the apical air, and that's very important. If you have a good uh, G, uh, if you have a good tuckback feeling, you will achieve a good gutta parka check in the radiographs. That's very important to check your GP points with uh, G, uh, with radiographs, radiographs because it's uh, it's very important. For example, in the uh, in the upper radiographs, you can see I'm I'm a little bit over, you know, in the uh, I'm in the right in the radiographic apex. So I mean I I know that any feet will go to the periodontal ligament in the radio GKF apex. So I, I have to cut this GP point. And in the lower uh, radiographs, that shows me the ME, uh, uh, the mesolingual and mesobuccal root canals merge in the apical third. That's very important. You cannot feel it through the root canal shaping. That's why I have to cut, for example, in, for example, my mesobuccal uh, cone too. That's very important to see the uh, master cone fit with radio impact, uh, with radiography and also you can check uh, you can you can make a second control with uh, visualization the uh, you know the GP point if there is a, a mid torque binding that's not what we want if we have apical binding like that that's what we want that's very important to check second after the gutta parcha radiographs. 
and we check the EGOT aperture, and then we can operate root canals. What about the vertical compaction? In vertical compaction, as same as lateral compaction, we shape the root canals, we clean the root canals, we feel the tack bag, and we see our gut aperture in the radiographs, and we decide to operate root canals, but with vertical compaction. In this step, we have to have two devices. One of them is downpack device, the other one is the backfield device. There are lots of story, there are lots of uh, you know studies about it. You know, as you see here, we cannot operate root canals very well with single cone technique, but with continuous wave of condensation technique or one vertical com compaction technique, we can achieve a better sealing of the root canals. Here is the another uh, device from Woodpecker. I'm currently using this device. Uh, this is P P uh, device. Downpack device of the woodpecker is very well designed. Uh, the design device. There are four working temperatures: 150, 180, 200, and 230. Because you can, uh, for example, some of the data purchases melt in high uh, Celsius, and some of them melt in the low uh, Celsius. That's why, for example, if if you have a tiny root canal, you can use lower temperature also to not to harm the periodontal ligament. So uh, you can choose whatever you want with, the, with this button uh, on the left screen. And also there are lots of uh, tips for this device. For example, 4504, 4204, 60, 12 taper. That's, that's very uh, big. You know, there are lots of tips for every root canal, every root canal anatomy. That's very important. It's really heat very, very fast, 0.2 seconds heating time, and it cools down in very high, uh, very fast, yeah, very fast. It's really good. And also there's a uh, there's a program inside it. It's, it's uh, if you press this button more than 10 seconds, the power will cut off automatically, okay? To not to harm your GP or your, you know, uh, your patient. And also in this device, in this system, we have a VPG, VP, VG uh, backfield device. And also there are two LED screen in the both side of the uh, device. And also you can adjust, uh, you can adjust all the uh, Celsius degrees in this device too. And also there are six needles for all options. 20 gauge, 20, 24, 22 millimeters, different gauges and different lengths for every root canal anatomy to better adapt the GP cones in the apical third of the root canal especially. And you can bend these tips in all direction as you wish. And the best feature of this device, I love it. Uh, you can, uh, this device is working with this, such kind of GPs, but not cartridge. That's why it's very low cost for root canal operation. That's very important uh, for me. Uh, that's why it's very economical for your operation. And also for vertical compaction, you have to have pluggers. So I like to use the pluggers with one side stainless steel, uh, one side stainless steel, one side it type nickel titanium alloy. That's why um, I can compact root canals easily. For example, in the curved canals, you can use uh, nickel titanium side, but in the coronal part, you can use very strong uh, stainless steel part. I will show you later. First of all, uh, uh, before uh, be before before my clinical uh, cases, I will show you in metro an operation in a lower canine. First of all, we adapt our sealer, our resin-based sealer, to the root canal, okay? You can seal all the canal with your Mastercon GP or whatever you want. You can use paper point, you can use a K file with counterclockwise con uh, direction, whatever you want. I like to use my Mastercon GP to adapt the sealer. Then I down pack the first part of the GP and then I compact 
Then I use Dompec PPG device again until to the working length minus three or four millimeters. It depends on you. It depends on the anatomy also. And also I compact the apical part. That's all, actually. After that, I can use CPG device to, for back feeling. As you see, oh, it's very easy to operate such a kind of anatomy, a wall anatomy, with PPG and PP, PP uh, devices with Woodpecker Company. I compact the, all the root canal like that. And after that, I'm using I'm using a little bit larger uh, plugger to compact the coronal third of the root canal like that. As you see, there are no voids through the canal. You can see, you can achieve a good, you know, operation. You can feel it like that very well. And here is this, uh, here is the 3D operation of this extracted lower canine. You can see in the proximal view or the, in the bilingual view, you can see very good three-dimensional operation. I mean, the 3D operation means one vertical compaction, actually. And also in this case, you will remember this case from the endomic access committees. For example, in the palatal canal, I enlarge the apex up to 40 or 4, and I'm going to downpack with woodpecker's device. Now I'm going to the working plan minus 3 or 4 millimeters. Here, there's another, you know, there's a GP there, and I'm repeating the procedure again. Here we go. And here, when the GP is hot, I direct the plug this part, this apical part of the GP, and you can see clearly. And after that, you can easily feel the root canal in a few seconds. It's very, really fast than the lateral compaction. It's very fast and very efficient. It's very important here. And you can see, you can feel the 3D operation in the radiographs too. Or another video here in the upper four, upper second, uh, upper, upper first premolar. I'm down packing again here. I'm going with down pack device. I pack the apical part here. I'm using a little bit smaller plugger, and then I pack the root canals, the apical part, and then I'm placing the buccal canal, the GP, again 40 or 4. I like to plug, you know, pump the GP a little bit to adapt all the sealers to the root canal, and then I'm going to down pack again. Here we go. Yes, and when the GP is hot, I directly compact the apical part, okay? I think I use a little bit much sealer here. <laughs> I will clean it with paper points. As you see, the down pack is completed, and then it's very easy to use, uh, you know, big field device at a few seconds. Oh, that's pretty good and then and directly go for buccal canal and here we go i missed the focus here sorry sorry about the video but after that i compact the kernel gp through the apex not gently <laughs> very strong way and
in this step, if you use a bigger, you know, I change my plugger, the bigger, and if you use a lateral force to the GP, you can cut the G, uh, extended GP through the coronal torque, you, as you see here. I cut the GP with lateral forcing, okay? As you see, you can easily clean all the root canal. Here we go, in the buckle. Wow, that's good. I like. Of course, you have to clean the root canals and and don't get it with you know alkali. But in every case, three, three. But in every case, everything is going like that. The same tools in MB one. I'm going for down peg. I'm reviewing my tip. Oh, yes. All the GP comes with the tip. So what's the problem? The problem can be about shaping. It can be about tuck back feeling. It can, it can be about application errors. I think in this case, I shape the root canals. I feel the tuck back. That's why I don't uh, commit that I make a mistake about shaping and tuck back. That's why I made a mistake in the application procedures because as you see in the video again, the recording video through the dental operation microscope is very hard issue actually because I go there to the unpack and I'm still there, still there, still there. So the tip cools down, then the, uh, the apical GP, you know, binds the tip and when I remove the tip, the all the GP comes with me. For example, the back feel, the, the back, uh, for example, the, the question is that, should I use one vertical compaction in all the cases? No, of course, if you don't like, you can, you, you, you can use it, you, you cannot use it, but I prefer to use in every my in every single my cases, but in such kind of anatomy like that, it's a fusion tooth. It's a pre-op. I remove the bridge. Here we go. Of course, in this situation, I use MTA for apical barrier. I use MTA here. How can you feel this hole? I don't call it like a, you know. I don't call it like a, a root canal. I'm calling it as a hole. You can just you can just feel this hole with one vertical or term, uh, thermoplastic GP points. Okay, you cannot use it with lateral compaction or something like that. Like that, you can just use you know the GP points like that. This is my one of the old old cases, you know. For example, in this case, I don't use the woodpecker's device, but it's not a problem. Nowadays, I'm using the woodpecker's device. As you see, you can compact all the root canal, all the root canal, three dimensionally, with GP points like that very well, very easy, and very careful. I overextended the uh, MTA to the apex, but it's not a problem because, as I said, it's biocompatible. As a post-op image, you can see the anastomosis is filled with, with GP, and this is the preparation of the, uh, preparation of the tooth. It's not done by me because I'm limited to endodontics. This is from Najati Kaleli, my prosthodontics, uh, Kalik, uh, my friend. And here's the post op. The so final result is very good. Another example to use a backfield device, backfield device without, without the, you know, uh, the master cone. For example, in this case, they place a script post to palatinal and also in the mesiobuckle. 
In the mesial muscle, there's a substitute perforation. I repair this substitute perforation with MTA, but in the palatal, there is a ledge also, as you see in the in the radiographs. After removing after removing, removing the script post and also removing the GP, I decided to use just thermoplastic GP to fill whole root canal. And please, please uh, look at how how force I'm using to uh, compact the GP. Here is another hole. <laughs> it's a really hole. No, look. I'm forcing a lot here, but in seconds you can feel whole root canal. In seconds, and here's the post op. As you see. When I force the GP to the apex, there are no overextension of my GP because I'm sure of my apical pre pre preparation. That's very important to tuck back and the apical preparation is very important in the operation of root canals. What about the MTA seal? We understand the uh, lateral compaction, bone vertical compaction, and now the MTA seal. In MTA seal, we can do shaping or not, because in the first uh, ex example of my cases, in the fusion teeth, where will I shape? I will just irrigate, activate the solution, irrigate, activate the solution. That's all. If you want, uh, we can do shaping. We have to have a backfield wise like CPG because we have to fill above the MTA uh, with GP. So we have to have a backfield wise. For example, in this case, I like to go for MTA plug in the apical third, and I will. Uh, I want to fill the uh, root canal with the thermoplastic. GP. I'm using MAP1 system from PD. It's very nice device. You can directly put an MTA where you want. That's very important. It's very clear. It's very precise. As you see, I'm just putting an MTA where I want. That's very important. Of course, after this procedure, after these procedures, I have to fill this root canal with GP points. But how can I fill it with lateral compaction or the other technique? How can I fill it? So I cannot. That's why it's very important to use backfill device. And here, the postoperative image, as you see, we can fill all the roots canal three dimensionally. You can understand it for even in the radiographs. It's very well, it's very three dimensionally operated. And that is this six month follow up. Everything is okay. Patient is happy. And as I said in the my as I said in my, in the beginning of my presentation, because of the bad handling properties of the MTA, there are lots of resin uh, biocerimic based or MTA based root canal sealers nowadays. And the the usage protocol of these uh, root canal sealers are called hydraulic op operation. And in this technique, you'll of course shape the root canal. You can use a tag bag. You can feel a tag bag or not. You can you can use gutta perca or not. Because in hydraulic operation technique, you can if you want you sh uh, you cannot use GP points. You can use uh, resin based, uh, sorry, MTA based root canal, uh, root canal uh, sealers to whole canal like calcium hydroxide. But I like to use gutta, gutta percha for hydraulic optimization. Okay, that's very important. And you have to use an MTA based sealer. If is, if uh, if you uh, if you remind, uh, if you remember that uh, the Epiphony SE was uh, used a lot of cases and uh, show 
example that there are, uh, in the end of this epiphany usage, there are lots of uh, retreatment indication has been born. That's why I, uh, in the first step, I just want to see the clinical uh, outcome of this MPA-based sealers. And there are lots of clinical uh, evidence about it. For example, in this uh, study, in this study, 307 feet with apical periodontitis followed up up to 40.1 months. It's very good. And the total overall success rate was 90.9%. It was very good. And the the highlighted in blue color is very important. Sealer ex extrusion was observed in almost 50% of the cases. The presence of the sealer extrusion didn't have any significant effect on treatment outcome. That's very important. If you extrude the sealer, that's, that's a problem. It will not affect negatively our uh, endodontic, uh, endodontic success. That's very important point. You can use it safely. But in this technique, you will have also have a down pack device. For example, this is my one of the first cases that I use MK base sealer. This is a nurse uh, patient, and uh, she came to my clinic after three or four dentist uh, visits, and <laughs> for different dentist visits. And then uh, she she doesn't want to pull out the teeth, uh, and she wants to uh, remain remain uh, remain the teeth. So I love such kind of uh, patient, but I love to operate root canals. I want to finish uh, the root canals in single section. But in this case, you can see there in the distal root there are huge radiolysis, and in the mesial there are a little bit radiolysis according to the distal root uh, apex. Uh, I cannot uh, stop the, you know, exudation from the distal root. That's why I have to place the calcium hydroxide. I use it in eddy uh, for uh, activation. I use lots of irrigation solution, much irrigation solution. I found uh, two distal, two mesial. I enlarged it up to 40 for mesials, up to 50 for distals. And I applied all what I know to this to after three visits, even I don't like uh, visiting, uh, after the three visits, the distal exudation, uh, I couldn't I couldn't stop it. And then uh, I said to I said to the patient that uh, I have a bioceramic uh, root canal sealer. I can fill the root canal with this uh, this uh, uh, root canal sealer, special root canal sealer, and then uh, if you have, if you, if you have, if you have symptoms, I can go for apical microsurgery, and uh, we can we can solve the problem. And she accept this uh, treatment option, and then I fill the root canals with uh, biosemic root canal sealer. But as I said, I like to use uh, gutta percha. I confirm the our GP, and as you see here. I'm just using, you know, bioceramic root canal sealer, biocera with application tip easily, like calcium hydroxide here. And in dust in the distal canal, you see it's marks, subacal and distal lingual. That's all. And you will place a one GP, and then I cut the GP in the coronal third, and then I plug the coronal third with uh, uh, with my pluggers. That's very important for hydraulic condensation because if you pull the GP vertically, it will expand the sealer to the root canals and in lateral or everything. And stomosis, as you see, I place the GPs. I cut the GPs with down pack device and then I plug I plug the GPs in the coronal third. Okay. And then here is the post -op -op post post -op radiographs and after that uh, the patient disappeared. And then I called the patient and uh, said that how how is going on? And uh, she came for a control, control uh, to my clinic, and I take a radiographs, and here is the three months, just three months follow up. Look at the distal. 
let's compare it. It's amazing, yeah, you know, it's amazing. These uh, MTA-based root canal sealers are amazing. Uh, I really want you to use in the, the vital feet. For example, chronic apical periodontitis or treatment procedures, you can use it safely. And of course, don't forget to clean your cavity with, with uh, alcohol or uh, special cleaners, okay? And in the end of my presentation, I want to show a whole case. What do I do in my daily clinical practice? As you see, I will treat the apical uh, uh, upper lateral tooth here with chronic apical periodontitis, chronic apical periodontitis. I'm placing my rubber dam here and I'm going to, I'm not, look, I'm using long shaft, long shaft bars. That's very important to my, uh, to, to better resolution, resolution uh, to better view, okay? And I'm using ultrasonic tips for conservative endodontic access. And then I'm using, of course, sodium hypochlorite. I don't have any file yet. <laughs> Again, I'm modifying my endodontic access cavity. There we go. I like to use scalers to, you know, uh, debriment the access cavity. I like these scalings. I didn't have any file again. I just using sodium hypochlorite because it's necrotic case. And I'm scouting the root canals with C pilot 12. And I'm using woodpecker's IE motor to determine the working gland. I determine the working gland. And I'm using it again. I'm using my file system TNDOMAST. I don't use TG file, the glypid file, because the root canal is already uh, large. So I'm just using, as you see, I'm just using free packings, cleaning and shaping the root canals, activating the irrigation solution between the files. That's very important. I like to irrigate because the, our main purpose is to disinfect the root canals. Here we go. I'm going, going with the endomast. I don't have Rush because I want to irrigate, disinfect the root canals. I'm irrigating, activating, irrigating, activating. And then 25 is okay. I will go for M40 directly and 40 is okay. <laughs> That's very important because 25 is uh, 25 or 6, 40 and 40, 40 is 44 all. That's why it's very, it's very easy to make the apical size 40 after 25. And I'm using 50 here, and 50 is done. Here we go. I'm irrigating, activating. I will use EDTA, sodium hypochlorite, and EDTA. Sorry, sodium hypochlorite, EDTA, sodium hypochlorite, and then operate root canals. I will check my uh, I will check my master cone to the working gland. I'm still irrigating, still you know uh, activating the solutions, as you see. Irrigate, activate, re-irrigate. Reactivating. I'm always irrigating and always activating. Of course, <laughs> that's very important step. Don't miss is this step. Please be patient and irrigate the root canals. Please. Now I will check my GP. It doesn't fit to the working cloud as you see. I will change my GP and I will try it again. If it fits the working plan, yeah, it fits to my, you know, marker. Here, it's very clean. You know, I'm using intracranial section uh, to use to, uh, you know, to better debridement the root canal. I'm using tapered GP points, and here we go. Second GP, it's okay. It's clear. You can see the root canal. It's very clear. 
And now I will use Bioceramic Root Canal Sealer. Bioceraform Dantac. Here we go. Yeah. And I will put my GP. I'm pumping a little bit. I'm filling the tuck bag. And I will use my back feet, uh, back down pack device, as you see here. And I'm packing the Cornell GP with my plugger. Here we go. And this very important step, I am cleaning the endodontic access cavity with a scaler because bioceramic root canal sealers can be removed very easily with water. Thank you very much for your attention and your patience. Uh, I can answer your question now uh, in ask and answer section. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. Hello again. I have a question. However, up to apex during breaking file of the needle tooth root. I have a question. However, stop apex during broken file. I could understand the question, sorry, Wait, wait. Uh, if you can write another question, I can, you know, I can answer. Carmen, hello from Argentina, hello from Turkey. Uh, Suzanne Ignar, it's Turkish. Karen, hello. Maitre, hello. Arifur Boyko, hello. Ashvi, hello. And I want to thank to my older brother, Dr. Mustafa Gindwar. And uh, please, uh, please follow me through the Instagram and the, and the Tarzrik. You can see my cases also. You can ask me. A good question from uh, Arifur. Uh, can we use BC sealers with one vertical compaction? Actually, we cannot. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the studies that showed that the biosonic seals, but there's a one company, uh, it's high flow biosonic sealer. It's the, the manufacturers claims that claims that you can use my biosonic sealer with uh, one vertical compaction technique, but there is no evidence yet. Okay, that's why I cannot uh, advise you to use it with one vertical compaction. But there is an evidence that uh, the normal uh, biosomic root canal sealers uh, can be uh, the chemical compaction uh, uh, deforms with one vertical compaction. Okay, with heat, I mean. Moit Al Tawil, special hello to you. I'm doing root canal, wait, uh, you're doing, yeah. Here, Amar, Dras. Sorry. How you manage the problem? For example, if uh, it's a good, it's a good, good question. If I'm sure with my shaping procedure and also my tuck bag, you know, tuck bag feeling, uh, I'm repeating the, all the procedures again, okay? If I'm not sure it, it, with my uh, preparation or uh, my technique feeling, then I'm, uh, I will reshape the root canal with one size bigger than the finishing file. For example, I finished the I finished root canals 2506, then I'm going for 4004, and then I repeat the procedure again. I will deal uh, this problem with such kind of solution, okay? Uh, 
and also Omar, yeah, uh, Umar, I think uh, it's like our Omar, uh, the Ra's Tariq, Tariq, uh, like it's Turkish. Uh, what temperature are you using to cut the GP with down pack? What tip size are you using for 25 or 25 or 6 root preps? Okay, that's a good question. I will show you the tip sizes again. For example, for example, in you know, uh, in 25 or 20, uh, 25 or 6 or, or 4 uh, tip or uh, preparation you can use 35 or 4 or 40 or 4 I generally use 40 or 4 or 35 or 4 uh, tips in the molars but even in the uh, upper central or distal or buccal uh, palatinal canal I will use I, I generally use a little bit more uh, sized <laughs> tips but the temperature always I use 180. I don't know why, but in 180, 180, uh, I feel confident. Not like 200, and not like uh, less 150. I like to use 180, and uh, for both the, the down peg and back field 200, uh, 200. I think it's a little bit much because. Uh, when I use 200, uh, sometimes in the palatinal canal or in the tiny canals, the patient can feel a little bit uh, pain, even 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 with anesthesia. That's why I don't I don't like to use 200 Celsius degree. As I said, uh, you, you can, um, for example, in the in the woodpecker's device, in the woodpecker's device, you cannot activate the device uh, for a long time. In ten seconds, the tip automatically, the device automatically cut off the power. Okay, that's very important. If you use too much, uh, too uh, if you spend too much uh, with heat in the canal, you can uh, you can uh, you know. You can damage the periodontal lig lig ligament. Uh, the, ri the temperature rising up to seven or nine Celsius degree will damage the uh, periodontal ligament. Uh, but in the in the literature, there is no evidence to uh, you know uh, the warm vertical compaction can cause per uh, periodontal ligament damage. Uh, actually, in America, in the U.S., and also in the, the part of uh, Europe, they always use warm vertical compaction for years. That's why, uh, for example, in the Middle East and in our uh, country, we use uh, generally lateral compaction technique, but I always using one word school compaction technique because it's very fast and very easy way to treat root canals three dimensionally. Can you tell us the name of metroperation root canals? Actually, materials mati uh, maite or maitre. Sorry for for my presentation uh, pronunciation. Uh, if I use one vertical compaction. I go for resin-based root canal sealer. For example, our company has a seal art, you know, seal art resin-based root canal sealer. It's, it's manufactured by Metabiomet, and I, I use the resin-based root canal sealer. But if I if, if I trade a divital tooth, non-vital tooth, okay, I always use bioceramic root canal sealer. For example, Biocera from Dantac, or uh, if you want, you can use another brand, but I prefer to use not one vertical compaction. I prefer to use single cone hydraulic con uh, condensation 
technique, okay? With a single cone with bioceramic sealer, okay? Okay, another question. How much? How much time do you cut? Omar, uh, really believe me, I think it's still, it takes 10 seconds, maximum, maximum 10 seconds. Because you're going through the my, uh, working plant minus three millimeters, you're waiting for three seconds, activate one second and pull it up. That's all, that's all. maximum 10 seconds. With alteration, 15 seconds or 20 seconds with, with, with uh, you know, uh, compaction to the apical third, maximum 20 seconds. That's why lateral compaction is very, very, very hard uh, according to one vertical compaction. But you have to get experience day by day. Uh, you can you can start with single uh, rooted tooth, for example, incisor or canine or first premolar teeth, and then you can go for molar teeth. But uh, when you used to uh, use one vertical compaction, you will not never go for lateral compaction again. How do you compare one vertical compaction? with single cone operation. Now, the concept, if we compare the same, for example, we are uh, planning, a, we are designing a study, okay? We will use resin-based root canal sealer, resin-based root canal sealer. One group is one vertical compaction, one group is single cone technique, of course, I will go for one vertical compaction with resin-based root canal sealer. But if we are using bioceramic root canal sealing, okay, hydraulic condensation, and I cannot use one vertical techniques with resin ba uh, bioceramic based root canal sealers, so I will go for single cone technique because the uh, MTA-based root canal sealers are very flowable, very flowable. And uh, it can uh, penetrate all the system with the aid of uh, vertical force that I applied with my plugger. That's why that's very easy to do it. And also after after 25, 24 hours, of, uh, it depends on the model or, or brand uh, that you use with bioceramic sealers. Eight hours on 24 hours, 25 to uh, maximum 24 hours later, the material will will be like a stone you cannot retreat it okay it will be like a stone that's why the uh, leakage is minimum that's very important uh, feature of the bioceramic root canal sealers Another question. Name of the rotative files. I use in my presentation two files, two file system. One of them is rotation files from VDW company rotate files. Okay. From VDW rotate files. In the other cases, I use T endo must T endo T endo taha taha endo. Not the endo, Turkey endo, okay? T endo must files from Dantac company, okay? That's rotational files. That th these are T endo must files are reciprocating files. BDW rotate files is rotational files. I prefer in my clinic both of it, but especially of course my design file T endo must. How to how to uh, broke file middle tooth of the root? Hmm. 
broken file removal is another uh, is another topic but uh, I, I love to use again woodpeckers companies devices uh, for example uh, the from DTE, DTE O600 ultrasonic device 600 ultrasonic device and there are lots of there are lots of lots of lots of types of ultrasonic tips that woodpecker have and very cheap very good very good performance cost value is very good that's why i always uh, use ultrasonic files or if the file is longer than three or four millimeters i uh, i'm just changing my technique to loop technique i'm i'm using btr pan from sarcomet company okay uh, i grab the file with a loop and then i pull the file out but if the file is smaller than smaller than the, you know uh, three or four millimeters and then i go for ultrasonic uh, retrieval technique okay Hmm, Umar, it's a good uh, question. Uh, the the quality of the GP points matters. Actually, uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know <laughs> because I didn't read any. I didn't. I didn't read any article about it. The quality of the GP points, but I like to. I like to my uh, clinical experience. I like to use the GP points which I use the native files brand. For example, if I use VDW rotate file, I'm using VDW's GP points for rotate files. When I use TNDOM mast from Dantac reciprocating files, I'm using TNDOM mast GP points, okay? That's very important for me, but actually the quality of the GP, in my opinion, will not matter because the GP is GP, you know, the raw material is the same, I think, I think, of course. I don't know, I don't know exactly, I don't know, I don't have any detailed information about it because I didn't, I haven't seen any uh, information in the literature, and the literature about the uh, gutta percha quality. I don't know, but uh, you, you're right, uh, some of the GPs uh, cannot melt very well, uh, some of them can melt easily because of the alpha phase or you know the beta phase you know there there are different gp points but uh, all the gps uh, in nowadays are can 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 melt and that's why it will not be a problem i didn't face any problem actually i use lots of brands of gp and i didn't face any problems about the bomb vertical compaction the tip is important i mean the operation device is important really really important if you use a non-quality uh, tips and device, it will not cut the GP very well, okay? That's very important. Uh, you have to consider it. Yeah, you wrote it, you wrote the same thing. Some of the GPs cannot melt, cannot be uh, cut, but... Uh, My shot, my shot, uh, Dr. My shot, Dr. Ali, yeah, Dr. Ali. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, this question is uh, this question is very often asked. Uh, the, all the people say that, uh, for example, I prepare the root cans up to 2506 with a working length 20 millimeters, okay, and then I try my master cone 2506 to 20 millimeters. It doesn't fit it. It fits, for example, 18 millimeters or 19 millimeters. I think, I think that's about that's about what I said before. Please use the same 
companies, brands, GPs with your file, okay? If you use X brand, X brand uh, file, don't use Y brand GP. It will not fit. It will not fit, okay? That's very important. That's very important. Sometimes, sometimes, as I as I said in as I mentioned in my presentation, as I mentioned in my presentation, sometimes in the same of, of GP points, in the same box of GP points, there are differences in the size according to the size. Okay, please try another twenty five or six GP. If the if it doesn't fit, try another one. You can you can try four times. Okay, if it doesn't fit, then you can change your GP or you can change your shaping uh, up to another size, okay? I really, I really want to thank all of you to write here. It's a good lecture, it's a good knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention. I love to share my knowledge, knowledge with you. It's very important and you are going uh, you are really uh, asking uh, good questions. Can you explain the secure technique? Of course. Actually, I uh, actually I want to uh, I want to remind you this technique here. For example, here for example, I use just secure technique. You know, look, I'm just using thermoplastic GP and forcing to the apical format. Just using and forcing to the apical format. That's all. In this technique, in this technique, as you see here, for example, I want to look at it. Here, here's the apex. Here's the apex, and here my GP, and here's the ledge. You see, here's the ledge. Here is the GP. Here's the apex. That's very important. Uh, if you want to use a secure technique, you have to be sure with your apical preparation. If you if you shape the apical part very well and very good, you cannot force your GP through the apex. Okay, it will resist to your you know GP. Okay. Arlan, uh, what's the special features of your TN domas files? There are less features about the uh, TN domas system, uh, but I can, uh, you know, I can write you uh, from DM and Instagram also. But especially the treatment, the heat treatment is different. Uh, it's called TM wire. Uh, it's a special heat treatment. It's not very soft, it's not very hard, uh, stiff, I mean. It's the middle of the uh, heat treatment and the taper of the files is very special. For example, TG have a very, very different heat treatment procedures and it's only have uh, 13 or 4 uh, size and, and 25 is to have 25 or 6. 40 and 50 has only 0.4. That uh, that gives gives uh, gi uh, this gives ability to our files to shape the shape only the apical part of the root canal after the M25. After shape the root canal with M25, you can go with M40 to the working plant minus four or three millimeters. Okay, then you will not uh, you will, you will not uh, cause damage in the peripheral area. You will shape directly the apical part of the root canal in few seconds okay that's the much that's very important point of the uh, our uh, system and also it's very well cutting efficiency everybody loves the uh, cutting efficiency some of the doctors doesn't like uh, aggressive files you know but i like aggressive files i mean the files should cut <laughs> That's why uh, I like ag aggressive files. The files cut very efficient. The blades are very, uh, you know, uh, cutting efficiency. So uh, I can write another 
uh, you know, the features about you, about our file. Antibacterial properties of PC sealers are always high than resin-based sealers, of course, because it's MTA-based, you know, it's high pH, and that's why uh, the antibacterial efficiency is very great. And the most important part of the bioceramic sealers is, you know, the bioactivity feature okay bioactivity is very important as i as i as you saw in my uh, last case in three three months in th just three months you can observe a radiographic healing it's not uh, it's, it's not parallel to our uh, theoretical knowledge because in the in the books of endo it's written that you can observe the radiographic healing in uh, at, at minimum six months that's very important. Uh, this bioactivity and uh, antibacterial efficiency is very high for bioceramic sealers. I love to use it. I love to use them. Okay, I want to thank all of you. I think uh, the questions are okay. Thank you very much for your all. And if you have any problem if uh, about Ando, please write me in Instagram, Facebook, or whatever you want. I can uh, peacefully join, uh, answer your questions again. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. See you in another webinar. Thank you very much.